So hello and welcome back to P Academy. So this is the part two of the video on that CAM profile diagram. So in the part one, we look at uh, CAM displacement diagram, how to draw the displacement diagram. So if you understand that properly, you'll be uh, this is how the diagram will look like. So if you miss that, you can just check the description of this video. You'll find the link to that particular one. All right. So now what we want to cover here is how to draw the CAM profile itself. itself. So that's one that looks like a circle and another circle and something is moving around like that. So just to give you an idea of what we are going to be doing in this video. Alright, so if you are new here, please click on that subscribe button if you are yet to subscribe to the channel. So, and then if you are finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps a lot. Alright, so now what we have on the board now is a displacement diagram. And then let's just analyze it. If you have that question 5 with you, um, where it says, um, let me read it here. It says the radial cam is 20 mm minimum diameter. Like I said, just pick the important thing. We are told that for 150 degrees camshaft rotation, it rises with, um, let me see, it rises, it rises 30 mm. So this is it, it rises 30 mm. So that's why we're having 30 mm here. So it rises 30 mm with uniform velocity. And I've explained that in the pattern of this video. So for 150 mm, um, degrees, which is to this point, it rises with uniform velocity. So just from this point to this point. And then we are told that for another 30, it rotates, it dwells. That means from here to here, it dwells as a straight line here. That's meaning it dwells. I'll explain that in the part one. And then for another 120 camshaft rotation, it experiences a 30 mm fall with simple harmonic motion. So from here to this point with simple harmonic motion. Okay. And then from 30 to 60, it dwells. So for, for, for here, it rises with a uniform velocity. For this point here, it dwells. And here it falls. It falls with what? Um, for 120, for the next 120, it falls with simple harmonic motion. Yeah, simple harmonic motion. Exactly. Now let me. This this um this one is quite simple. Exactly. So you have to also prepare your mind for a question like this, where you might have, let's say, for example, they'll tell you that okay, it rises for 30. So let's take it to be at 30, and then it dwells, and then it falls for let's say. For 15, let's pick 15 with simple harmonic motion exactly, and then maybe from there again it dwells again. The question can want to be tricky and tell you that it rises again with another uniform velocity and then it falls with a um, uniform deceleration. You understand something like that? So it cannot always be as simple as this, but once you understand the concept of rise, dwell, fall, does it rise with a uh, uniform velocity or with a um, simple harmonic motion or with a um, uniform acceleration and then you're able to understand if it falls with uh, uniform velocity or with simple harmonic motion or uniform deceleration you won't have problem all right so all of those are what i've explained in the part one of the video all right so now let's draw the cam profile based on what we have here now if you look at that question it says it has a cam um, a radius cam with 20 mm exactly so okay minimum okay i uh, come with 20 mm minimum diameter so what you do is you draw a circle with a diameter of 20 mm minimum. So you can decide to work with more than 20. Exactly. So you draw a circle. You bring your, your compass. You draw a circle. of um, So this is the center of the circle of 20 mm. Since that they told us that that's the diameter of, um, of the radial cam. So that means the radius of that circle is going to be 10. Exactly. All right. So the next thing is we are going to draw is if we have the diameter or let's, let, let me work with, uh, okay, let's just say, we are told that the diameter is, is 20. Exactly, so let's, that means, um, let's work with radius. So that means the radius is, um, is 10 mm, right? So the next thing you are going to do is, you are going to add the height. That's the total height which the, it, it rises is 30. So plus 30, that's going to give us 40 mm. Exactly. So you bring in your compass again from the same center. Now you measure 40 mm and you draw the next circle. So that's how you use it. If this, all right. So then you draw the, um, the second circle. So don't forget the first circle. You draw it. Giving you'll be, be giving exactly for this particular. We are told that with a minimum of 20. So you can decide to work with 30 as the diameter. Exactly. So if it is 20 diameter that means the radius is 10. now that 10 you add it plus the height here that you have been given for this particular question is 30 exactly 
So the next thing is to divide it into into 12 because this should be 12 divisions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this would be 12 divisions exactly. Now that depends on um, the divisions that you use exactly. So if you use um, if you use 12, you divide the circle into 12. If you use um, 6, maybe, or you use 8, whatever divisions you use here is what you're going to divide your circle. So if you use 8, if you divide this into 18, also you divide this into 18. I hope that is clear. So since I divide, I have these 12 divisions here, so I'll just divide my circle into 12. So again, to divide your circle into 12, you draw your vertical line and then your horizontal line. Make sure this thing is accurate. Exactly. Once you are able to get your vertical and horizontal line, just bring in your compass. Set it to the radius of this bigger circle, which is, I think, 40, right? Set it to the radius of this bigger circle. So, which will be... Okay, this is 10, which will be 40, yeah. So, from this point here, you draw an arc. With the same length, you turn it other. you draw an arc. You bring it here. You draw an arc. With the same length, you come here, so you draw an arc. So you do that on the four, on these four points here. You draw an arc here, and then from here, you draw an arc. You bring it here. You draw an arc to touch the circumference. So what you just do next is, so once you join them together, you'll be you've successfully divided it into. Anyway, so once you do it correctly, you'll be able to, you've divided the circle into 12 equal parts. Then you go ahead and indicate this is 0, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, uh, 90 degrees, um, um, 210 degrees. Is it 210? So having done that, the next thing now is to transfer the height of all these things into this drawing. And this is how you go about it. Don't forget, this is our 0 degrees. This right is at zero degrees. You bring in your compass. You from the thirty degrees, you measure the height of thirty degrees, which is something like this, right? So what you do is you come and place it on the circumference of the smaller circle inside. You place it on it, and then you draw an arc on this line that is going to thirty degrees, exactly. Now, let's just say somewhere here. Then you go to sixty degrees. You adjust your compass to the, uh, to the height of it here. Then you bring it to 60 degrees. You draw an arc. You continue in that manner. This is for 90. You come to 90. Don't forget, this thing is not drawn to scale. So, come to 90. You draw the arc. Exactly. You continue like that. Then, uh, let's continue. If you, till you get to even at 150. So, at 150 is at the circumference of the bigger circle. Which will definitely fall somewhere here. So if you do that of 150, it will be here. If you do that of 182, it will fall here because it dwells. Exactly, it, it dwells. Then you continue in that manner. So let's say we have done all that and then probably at 240 now. You pick it the same thing. You come to 240. You place your compass here. You draw the arc. You come to 300. Just continue like that. Let's say for 300. Okay, 300 is on the smaller circle. So definitely. If you're on 300, it will, it will fall on the uh, circumference of the smaller circle. And then from that 300 to 360, it dwells. So that means it's going to continue on the smaller, on the circumference of the smaller circle. circle. So now let's just say this, at 60, this is it. 90, at 120, then at 150, like this. So I'm just picking it randomly anyway. But I hope you got the concept. So now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to use your French curve to join all of these points. Either your French curve, your flexible curve, or your broom. So if you join your point, it should look something like this. So at this point where it dwells, it should just continue on the circumference here from 150 to 180 to this point like this. So you're going to be having something like this. Exactly. So now the next thing I'm just going to draw is, is um, is your camp follower so you're going to be having at this point zero you're going to be having something like this and then so at the top you're going to be having something like this so this is it so this is a point edge and then at the top you're going to be having something like this just to, this means the thing continues just like you cut it off so this is how your 
um, the CAM profile, the diagram itself, this is how it's going to look like, and that's the process of drawing it. So, um, there are some other questions that is in that question of five, like it says that 225 degree, what would be the displacement of the follower? And so, as 225 degree, um, let's see, so 225 should be in between 240 and 270. So, just trace it up here, and then you find at, you find the, uh, the length at this point with respect to 30 degrees. So that answers that question. Then um, at the displacement of 20 mm, what to be the angle of, of rotation? So at 20, okay, at the displacement of 20, so you can just measure 20. So what angle does it make? This point where it is touching the displacement diagram, trace it down. What angle is here? You can also trace this down, what angle is here? And that answers the question. So, so basically that's it on the CAM profile diagram. Um, so if you have been able to watch the first part of this video and then the, now the second part, I believe you won't have problem with a CAM profile diagram. So what you just have to do is to spend time to, to practice. So I'm still going to do the real drawing on the drawing sheet with pencil and paper so that you see how I'm picking some of those lines in case you didn't really get it in this, um, let me just call it in this theory part of it. So but apart from that, I believe um, it should be good. But if you have any question, just drop it in the comment section or you can send it to me directly, whichever one, I'll respond to it. So if you find value in this, please give it a thumbs up, please like, please share, and then I'll see you all in, in another video. I wish all of us best of luck.